Hey everybody, this is Brian. If you're following along, this is video 16 in our HTML tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about more inputs. If you remember, an input is a way of grabbing information from the user. We're just going to add a few more here and discuss the various types. You've seen the text one before. Another one is hidden. And another one would be password. Be sure to change the name field of these. If you don't, if you submit this without changing the name, you're going to have a bunch of them just named name, which would not be good because then you can't tell what the user typed in where. Another one would be a checkbox. I'm going to add a couple of these. Whoops, checkboxes don't have sizes. Let's break these up a little bit with some returns. And another type is called a radio button, or just radio. And we're going to give these the same name, just R1, just for the sake of argument. And I'll add a third radio button named R2, that way you can see what's going on here. Save our work, flip over to our web page. Now, You've seen the text box before, you've seen the search button. This is a password field. Anything you type in here will be masked for security. You'll just see those dots. Check boxes, you can check on and off. Radio buttons are these little guys. Now, when you click ones with the same name, they're considered group, meaning only one of them will be checked. However, if it's named differently, it can also be checked. Remember, these two are R1, and that one is R2. To solidify that, we're going to add another R2. Now, the names really aren't important. Um, just try to give it a meaningful name. I only name these R1 and R2 for Radio 1, Radio 2. Another one would be a select field. Now the select field actually has an off, so be sure to put that in there. And inside the select field you can add options. We'll just add a couple of these. And we'll make one of these selected. This will all be pretty apparent here in a second. Bear with me. save our work. Now remember with the select you have to give it a name and a size. The size determines how many of these will be displayed at any given time. Inside of it we have four options, one of which is selected blue. Once again we have two radio groups, R1 and R2. And here's our select field with blue selected. And when you drop down, you can see there's red, blue, green, yellow. Now let's revisit the select field. I want to explain something else very quickly. If you just take the same select field, copy and paste it. And let's just add a return just so we can see what's going on. This time set the size to, say, 8. Save your work. Go back to the page. Refresh you can see that the top one is a drop-down list where the bottom one is just a normal list. In programming terms, this top one would be called a combo box and this bottom one would be called a list box 
but they both use the select command. Let's actually break those up a little further just so you can see that they're not connected in any way. They're independent of each other. Now in these lists you can only select one. You can't select multiple items. Yes, I know I'm probably going to get some hate mail. There are lists out there where you can select multiple items, but for this tutorial <laughs> you can only select one. Now you might be wondering what happened to our hidden field. If you flip back to the code, you remember we put this field in here called hidden and the name of hide, size of 30 with the value of some value. Where is it? Well, it's a hidden field, and hidden fields are important because you can add data to the form without the user having to input it. For example, let's say you wanted to, well, let's just say you wanted to know where this came from. You would say www.mywebsite.com, yeah, whatever your website is. That way the user never has to enter this, but every time you submit the form, that information will be posted. Now, once again, remember we are using the post method and the action is going to page two. You can change this to an email by saying mail to and then whatever your email address is. And that will send the form in its raw format to you via email. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and if you have any questions or comments, just drop me a line. Thanks for watching.